thinking about becoming a contractor, maybe even a consultant. You've had enough of office politics and you kind of like the idea of working for yourself. So you're thinking about hanging out a shingle and putting yourself out there on the open market. Maybe that's a good idea, maybe it ain't. Before you step off those tracks, let's take a look at a couple of the issues around that and see if you're cut out for it. Before we start this conversation, I should preface it by saying that I never actually had a corporate job. I was born into the contractor lifestyle. I took a few short jobs during holiday breaks while I was studying at university, and the people I met during those jobs kept on sending me contract offers after I graduated, and I kept accepting them. So I'm not a particularly good example of this. We really need to talk to someone who's lived in both worlds and made a successful transition from one to the other. Doreen, give me a little bit of background on how you decided what you were going to work in. Yeah, sure. I'm Doreen Mikitiuk. Hardly anyone can pronounce my last name, <laughs> so I usually drop that one. Um, I studied in Germany, studied um, geology and then economic geology in the masters um, in the eastern part of Germany at a um, university called uh, TU Bergakademie Freiberg, to say it precisely. <laughs> and um, yeah, then I had uh, my master project with uh, Rio Tinto, which was in the Pilbara. And uh, yeah, I made it then over to Australia. And from there, yeah, through a variety of, of companies from majors to um, mid-tier juniors and um, consultancy. And, and now I'm working for myself for the last three and a bit years. So how did you first get interested in geology? What, what was the, the trigger that you decided you really like rocks? Um, it started off in school, actually. Um, I've always liked geography, you know, it's obviously not geology, but uh, there was one particular chapter in geography which started talking about, uh, here we go, we're talking about how is the earth formed, and, and that got me thinking, and I, I realised, okay, well, we're actually more interested in just wanting the general explanation of here's the, the few rock types, and I was like, oh, but, but how does this intrusive get here, right? Um, so that's what probably... Um, yeah, sparked my interest. Then I started looking into it and uh, there was, amongst other options like medicine, I then, you know, that went off the table and I uh, ended up in geology. <laughs> and initially I was interested in fossils, but that also I started studying and I just realized very quickly that that's not the path for me. And I'm interested in, you know, finding, you know, new deposits and economic geology basically. And, and that's how I then ended up in the Masters of Economic Geology. And that Masters project was in Australia. Yeah. and through Rio. Mm -hmm. um, so was it an automatic decision then to work for Rio or did you think mm, what am, what's my career path here? How did you make that decision to work for a major? It was probably started earlier in uh, when I started my master's I knew okay I don't want to stay in Germany because all of the geologists I knew there they were just working in offices and I just couldn't imagine just being you know having studied geology looking at rocks and then just ending up in an office so i knew okay well where do i want to go i want to go international right okay so i need to line up my master's project to be already in another country because how else do you get a visa and you know that was my thinking behind and i was like okay how i can do this so it's either canada which is way too cold <laughs> <laughs> or it's australia where i thought okay this is awesome and you know you hear all the good things apart from the snakes and spiders but <laughs> so and, and then um, after a few actually failed attempts of getting projects in other parts of Australia then ended up um, getting a connection to um, someone within Rio Tinto through my professor and then um, then I was in yeah doing my, my master's in, in the Pilbara and CIDs. So how did that progress yeah. from a master's project into yeah. a job how did, how did that actually happen what was yeah. So the, the way it happened was um, that um, as I was traveling around the Pilbara, I, I realized, okay, well, there's actually a team called the Exploration Team, which I, at that time, I didn't even know what that is, right? And I was like, oh, that sounds interesting, you know? That, that sounds about like, that works with my adventurous and, you know, um, character and uh, curiosity. And I thought, okay, well, how about, I work for free for you for five weeks <laughs> or something. We started off with, oh, I'll just see how it goes. But it ended up being about five weeks or a month and a half. Um, 
I said, okay, well, that gives me the opportunity to actually learn how, what I need to do in that sort of role and job and what I like it. And I thought, okay, win-win. And obviously, you know, they get to know me as well. And if Rio would like me, then they might even get me a job out of this. And yeah, and I, I just absolutely fell in love with it from there. And I knew Exploration is in my blood, basically. And Rio was the obvious choice because they were sponsoring your yeah. um, masters. Had you even thought about contracting or, or uh, working independently at that stage? I think I was too shy at that point. <laughs> I was just keen to, to learn and to work with a major company. It's just great, you know, it's the best experience. You know, you potentially get moved around in different parts of the world and, you know, um, also in different teams. And I thought, oh, this is great, you know, perfect opportunity. Uh, what else do you want? You know, have you come from Europe, from the other part of the world, really? And just having that opportunity, I was just, yeah, I was just amazed that it's all happening and falling into place. <laughs> All right, so you've been working for a major company for a decade or more. You, you've moved around a lot. You've got a lot of experience. You, you've built up a skill set. You understand the things you're interested in. What, what point did you get to to decide that you wanted to try a different mode of employment? Well, that wasn't, it wasn't quite at the time when I was with Rio. I had it on my mind already at that time. I was with Rio about, well, about seven years. Yeah. And um, I had it on my mind and I had already started. Every time I met a consultant, um, I've actually asked the question, I said, oh, so, you know, is it easy to get into this or what do I need? And a lot of times I actually got discouraged and they said, oh, you need at least 20 years of experience and um, you don't do it, it's just hard and you don't have any regular income. And, you know, all of these things I heard, but it was always in the back of my mind, right? And I just thought, okay, well, this is not the right time yet and I need, I'd like to see um, different companies operate in the industry first, right? Because I've only come from this, from a major company and I've only seen it from one side, I thought. And it, that's actually true, it turned out to be very true. Um, then working for a consultancy for a little while and then moved to um, mid-tier, I'd say, um, Genova Resources. And that gave me an idea on, I started to understand the markets more and you know, what, what happens with, with, you know, with commodity prices, which when you're within a major company, you, you do realize to some degree, but you don't have to watch it as closely as you do when, you, when you're working with juniors, right? I'm starting to understand a bit more what's going on in the industry rather than just being in that bubble in a major company working in those mm. teams. From what I've talked to other people, it's that, need for control over your own life and and then me included ignore all the potential downsides because it, it, that's just so attractive to be in control of your life yeah i guess that's one thing that wasn't the main driver for me it was probably i guess the flexibility in general obviously if there's a job on it's on <laughs> but to some degree you can say oh well i'm just leaving those two weeks and that's it i'm just having that time off or i'm using that time to learn something new because every time there is a gap i, I used to just um, keep up to date with what's going on whether that's technical or on the market in the market but that flexibility was probably the main thing and also this curiosity of looking at a lot of different projects and working with different companies and people and having this constant challenge probably from the last few years in, in rio through the other jobs afterwards i was like constantly looking for a new challenge and i felt um, there was a lot of limits to what can be done, especially when you have new ideas. There was always, oh, no, we can't do that. There's no budget for that. Or, yeah, put that, you know, to side for now. And you're like, but, but this is great, you know, well, why? You know, the passion, the passion was, I felt, um, it got a bit lost. There's all this, you know, paperwork and admin and operational things, which, you know, they're all part of it, but it, it did make it um, not as efficient as I'd like it to be. And that might be a bit of a German, character there coming out but <laughs> yeah so it did you know it did frustrate me to some degree as well and I thought oh, well, if I run on my own I can hopefully make a difference which I felt it wasn't always possible but how are you supposed to know all of these things you're supposed to be the expert for everything right um you know you don't know anyone at sort of my age um and not a female that you know who've done it and that's probably what was holding me back for quite a long time until I was going for issues with my health and uh, made me realize what's important in life and and this is the time 
when I thought, okay, well, where do you want to go from here? Are you going to finally make that step and go on your own? I wanted to take a longer holiday as well. <laughs> so I ended up going to Tasmania actually for a couple of months and just clearing my head. And when I came back, I started off. What did the rest of your family think when you told them, oh, I'm going to quit my job and go out on my own? Well, my dad actually, together with my mum, they, they had um, a painting construction company and um, th their reaction was, mm, okay, they knew how hard it is because they had gone through a very tough time where they had a client um, not pay and they ended up in court and they nearly didn't make it through. So they obviously had that in the back of their mind. But in the end, you know, they just said, you, you do what you need to do if that's, if you think that's the path for you to go forward, then we're here, you know, if you need some advice, but we can only tell you about the German systems. So they've been supportive, but they do, you know, they do question even, you know, if I have a time where, you know, all of a sudden it's a bit more quiet or if I'm going the opposite and it's very busy, they're going, oh, oh you know, <laughs> as parents do. <laughs> But uh, no, they've been supportive of, and I probably, um, probably would have done it anyway, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, and with work colleagues, um, initially everyone thought, oh, well, so you, you can't get another job, so you're just setting up your own thing just for the intermediate time frame. And uh, I was actually quite surprised that people thought that. They're like, oh, you're just contracting for a little while. I'm like, well, actually, I don't want to just contract, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not doing this because I can't get a job because, you know, there were plenty of jobs around at the time and I just decided, no, this is it, I'm doing this. <laughs> Thanks very much, Doreen. That's been really uh, enlightening for me anyway, not having made that jump myself. And you know, I'm sure that anyone else considering making that jump will see that in a, in a much clearer light now from, from your experience. At, and, Thanks very much for sharing, as they say. Mm. Thanks very much, Nick. It was good to, good to chat. Okay, so you've decided to go solo. Your first task is to set up a business structure. In the next episode, we'll take a look at how you decide what structure might be appropriate for you and how you go about setting it up.